You know, I'm starting to wonder whether or not Akka is truly serious about the Oshinoko manga. Like, what if this entire story was a troll and he just made it as an experiment, but it ended up gaining mass amounts of popularity? Because that's what it felt like after reading his latest chapter of Literal Dog. Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to another Oshinoko manga analysis. Yes, I know it's been a while, but what do you want me to do? I can't help it, Akka likes video games. Speaking of things that Akka likes... Anyways, let's get into it, but first, as always, go ahead and like this video so we can bring some more Oshinoko fans to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I forgot to plug it in the last video, but join the brand new Discord full of people who love anime and Oshinoko just as much as you do. Alrighty then, let's get into chapter 126. I'm gonna say this in the beginning so you can bear with me for the rest of the video, but the dialogue in this chapter was terrible. I think what may have happened is whoever translated this chapter translated it horribly. Some of the things that the characters say make no sense. Like this scene right here. You can't even tell what Ichigo is talking about. I think he's trying to say that it's easier for Ichigo to be a manager because his name isn't involved, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, let's get into the manga analysis. We start unexpectedly as Akka decides to skip over Miyako and Ichigo's long-awaited reunion and jumps right into a totally different scene. We see all of Miyako's employees along with Ichigo who looks like he just came out of a 16-hour shift. Miyako begins assigning divisions to each of her employees and assigns Ruby and Aqua to herself. To me, it seems that Miyako has gained some of her confidence back as this is the first time we see Miyako take charge like this within the company. We see Ichigo wiping down a window which is without a doubt a fitting punishment for him and the employees seem to think that Miyako has lost her mind. Then Ruby makes her first appearance in the chapter and it's weird to see her with that happy look on her face as only a couple chapters ago she was still in her revenge mode. Ichigo talks about the struggles of having to listen to Miyako's every command and Ruby seems to think that Ichigo came back under his free will. Ichigo very annoyingly corrects Ruby, telling us that he was set up by none other than Aqua because who else, am I right? And with Aqua even being the one who introduced Ichigo to the restaurant in the first place, it's pretty clear that Aqua is doing this simply to keep Ruby focused on her idol career and not her revenge. But nope, Ruby seems to think that Aqua did it out of his brotherly love for her, which is displayed in a panel that looks like took the entire week to make. Ruby rambles on, yapping away, mentions incest, and yaps some more. Then we start to get into why Ichigo was brought back into Strawberry productions as it seems that he hasn't lost his manager's touch just yet showing Miyako how she should be handling Ruby as a star. Not taking all the jobs that come in, only the ones that will benefit Ruby, taking steps to make sure Ruby isn't a one-hit wonder, and taking on work with schedules that are further out so she'll always have jobs coming in. It's like listening to Aqua talk to the crow girl about his revenge. Everything is carefully planned and there's meaning behind every step. Ichigo then goes on to talk about how much easier it is to have Miyako's name on everything because people don't know that Ichigo is running everything and is basically incognito. It's hard to grasp what Ichigo is trying to say because again the translation is horrible but I think because Ichigo isn't in charge they're not getting an over amount of jobs for other idols. I think what Ichigo is trying to say is that because it's not his name and the company is under Miyako's name, Strawberry Productions is only getting jobs for Ruby which is allowing them to leverage offers and pick which ones will truly impact her career. Then Ichigo mentions that Miyako needs to be watching out for one of her children. Miyako obviously thinks of Ruby as Ruby has been and is still technically a mess, but Ichigo isn't talking about Ruby. He tells Miyako that he meant Aqua, and reading Miyako's face, it looks like she might have died standing. Then the chapter ends with double dark star-eyed Aqua and a crow, which most likely means more plotting in the next chapter. So that is the end of the manga summary, let's get into the major points of the chapter. The first being Ichigo's return to Strawberry Productions and why Aqua made that happen. I think that it was both for the sake of Ruby and Miyako. For Ruby, Aqua doesn't want her thinking about revenge at all and wants Ruby 100% focused on her acting and idol career. And for Miyako, I think Aqua is trying to get Miyako to focus 100% of her attention on Ruby so he can move freely without being watched over. I think that his plan was working, judging from Miyako's reaction of Ichigo telling her that something may be happening with Aqua. It looked as if Miyako didn't suspect a thing, which is perfect because Aqua is going to start doing some of the dirty work in his plan and needs to make sure no one catches on to what he's up to. Now let's take a look at what's going on with Ruby. I know I've mentioned it before, but guys, I honestly have no clue. I thought the incest thing was just a gag joke back in 124, and we wouldn't be seeing any more progression for a while, but it appears I am heavily mistaken. But I still think that Aqua meant for this to happen. Ruby seems to be in a great mood, and it's just a matter of if Aqua can keep Ruby at a close distance without her getting too close, if you know what I mean. Like I said before, I think Aqua is planning on sacrificing himself in order to kill Hikaru, so he's not too worried about the promises he makes to Ruby, he just needs to keep Ruby from finding 
finding out what he's up to, very similar to his situation with Miyako. As to what Aqua's up to in that final panel, that'll be saving for my next video, so make sure you're ready for that. Before I go, I always ask that you hit the video with a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and click right here to see who the better character is, Connor or Akane.